Tetris, one of the most popular games of all time. Now I've never actually made Tetris before so today I decided to change that and to make things more interesting I'm gonna write everything myself without using anyone's code. How hard can it be? Future me speaking, really hard. Okay, we're gonna use the simple and fast multimedia library because it's easy to use for a dumb person like me. Tetris has 10 columns and 20 rows. Each cell will be 8x8 pixels and we're gonna resize the whole thing by 4. Let's see. Okay, we have a window. Now let's fill it up with cells. Very good. Since we need to store the current state of the matrix, I declared a two-dimensional array called, well, matrix. We're gonna change it with the mouse for now. There. That looks cute. Alright, we have a class for the falling tetramino. It's gonna fall until it hits the floor. Then it's gonna update the matrix and return to the top. It has only one shape for now, which is the O shape. I'll add other shapes later. And it's working. I didn't add any collision checks or controls to it, so it's repeating the same thing. Let's fix that. Along with checking if it hit the floor, it will also check if it hit another tetramino in the matrix. We also have two new functions that'll move the tetramino horizontally, and they both have collision checks. We're slowly making progress. Time to add some variety. I manually wrote every minus position based on the given shape. For now we're not gonna write any randomness. Instead we're gonna cycle through each shape. Here's the I shape, J shape, L shape, O shape, S shape, T shape and the Z shape. Now watch what happens if we lose the game. It's kinda beautiful, but we don't want that. So we're gonna make the reset function return a boolean value and it's gonna return 0 if it can't find an empty space. We're gonna restart the game for now. Of course we can't play a game that only lets us lose. So now we're gonna add line clearing. Here's the logic. We're gonna check every row starting from the top. If it has no empty cell, we're gonna clear it. Then we're gonna swap it with the row above and so on until we reach the top. After that, we're gonna return where we left off. For now we're just gonna clear the line without moving the lines above. Alright, it's time to clear our first line. Uh, what? Why is it not working? I realized my mistake. Instead of checking the matrix like this, I was checking it like this. So now it should work. Oh yes! I think it's time to make rotations. Honestly, I'm really afraid to write a rotation function because it's working and I don't want to ruin it. But I have to. So let's do it. We're gonna start with a T-shape. Since the center of rotation is located on one of the minos, we can calculate the position of other minos relative to that mino. Just like before, I wrote every rotation state manually. I just wanna know will it work or not. And it's working. Now we just have to repeat the same thing for other shapes. Remember I said I was gonna write everything myself? Well, here. 300 lines of code. I bet some programmers watching this are crying right now like You could use simple algorithms, rotation matrix, literally anything else. And to that I say, I know, but I don't know. So, you know. The I shape was the hardest. Because its center of rotation is located at the intersection of the cells. So I had to find this position before rotating it. But it's working, so we did it. The only thing left to do is the wall kicks. If we move the IT terminal to the far left and try to rotate it, it's not gonna do that. Because rotation causes some minus to go outside the matrix. To fix that, we have to kick the tetramino around before saying it's impossible. Thankfully, this website provides us with the data we can use. I made a new function which will return the wall kick vectors based on the given shape and rotation. And we're gonna apply and check every vector to see if it fits or not. Alright, the game is almost done. Time for some polishing. First of all, we're gonna add the soft drop and the hard drop. For the hard drop, we're gonna move the tetramino down until it hits something. Then we're gonna reset the fall timer. And for the soft drop, we'll simply reset the fall timer at short intervals. And now the game no longer challenges our patience. Next, every Tetris game has a little preview of the next tetramino. So let's add that as well. First we're gonna increase the window size. Then we're gonna draw a square on the corner. So far so good. Now we need to somehow draw the next tetramino. I just copy pasted the code from the tetramino class. And here we're drawing it on the screen. It's working, now let's shift it to the center. No, no, hell no, perfect. 
I think it's time we add some randomness to the game. For that, we're gonna use the random library. After each reset, we'll choose a random shape from the distribution. I also improved the controls. Previously, the game was moving the tetramino after the key was released, and now it's moving it after the key is pressed. You can't see it, but trust me, the difference is gigantic. Next. Now the next thing I wanna add is a line clearing effect. Because right now, if I clear a line, nothing impressive happens except for the line being deleted. That's boring. So let's change that. The idea is, before the row disappears, we'll show some white squares that'll decrease in size. First I made a new array which we can use to see which lines are being cleared. I also made a timer for the line clearing effect. Then I spent hours trying to figure out how to draw this effect. Let's see how it looks. Oh yes! So satisfying. Now we're gonna add the ghost tetramino. First I made a new function which will return ghost minos. Then I took the code from the hard drop function since they're similar. And finally, we're drawing it on the screen. Alright, now the game is a lot easier to play. Now to make this game more challenging, I'm planning to increase the game speed over time. We just need to replace the constant with a variable. Then we're gonna decrease the variable after the player clears a certain number of lines. I set it to 1 so the game speed is gonna increase really fast. I can do it! I can do it! Yeah, I don't think I can do it. Okay, we're almost done with the polishing. Let's let the player know how many lines they cleared and the current speed of the game. For that, we're gonna use the Consolas font. Alright, let's see how it- Oh my god! It's awful! Why is it so blurry? So after hours of searching, I couldn't find a way to make it appear sharp. So instead, we're gonna do something else. Here's the font which I made myself. We'll use it in our game. And I wrote a simple function for that. Let's see. Oh my god, look at this text, mmm, so sharp. Now the only thing left to add is the game over screen, because right now the game simply restarts. We're gonna pause the game after the player loses until they press enter. During the pause, we're gonna change every Tetramino's color to grey. Let's see if it works or not. And we've officially done it, finally. However, there's one more thing left to do. The game is working amazingly, but the code is very messy. So let's clean it up. I made a new function that returns an array of minos based on the given shape. With this function we'll have less repetition in our code. Then I decided to rewrite the rotation algorithm. Oh thank god. The formula for clockwise rotation is to swap the coordinates and change the sign of the x coordinate. And it's the same for counterclockwise rotation except we change the sign of the y coordinate. Here's the new rotation function. Along with other changes which I did off camera, we went from 1300 lines of code to only 900. Now that's a huge improvement. So we're basically done. Now I wanna find out how much I can score. Come on, come on! Okay, this doesn't count. No, no, damn it! 66. I think that's good enough. Thanks for watching. Link to the code is in the description, you can check it out. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. And one more thing.